This is the Sideline Slice, presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. Here's your host, Jessica Cooty, and Husker Radio Network analyst, Jeremiah Searles. We're back with another episode of the Sideline Slice, presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers, alongside Jeremiah Searles. I'm Jessica Cooty, and bye week, coming off the bye week, you rested, recu recuperated, all of that good stuff, Searles. Oh, I was on the road all weekend. You, you, you know, I wasn't. I wasn't sitting at home. I had a wedding in Kansas City. Celebrated a good friends, Matt and Ashley. Flew to Cincinnati. Watched the Bengal game. Beat up on the Seahawks. Saw a client. Got home Tuesday, and now we're right back into game week, ready to rock and roll. You know, it is. It's fun watching college football on Saturday, and not like not that I don't love watching the Huskers, but not having the like I want to watch the Huskers, but like just enjoying what is a college football Saturday without having like so much invested yeah. into one team. Yeah. You know, so it was great to just sit around on Saturday on my travel day. I, I turned the Delta Sky Club in Kansas City into a sports bar. <laughs> And I had, like, TVs, iPads up, and it was great. I had a great time watching college football on Saturday. So no bye week for Searles then? No. Hashtag no days <laughs> off. Well, let's um, talk a little bit about this team and, and what is it like. So we talked a lot about how much better it is to go into a bye week coming off of a win. But, um, you know, with, with the team now that you're back to it, mm -hmm. how hungry do you become now that it's, okay, it was a nice time to have a, the bye week. We, but now it's back to work and we are ready to get back to it. Yeah, you know, they they for sure feel refreshed. You know, when you come off of a win and you can take a second to actually take a true deep breath, and this is the perfect bye week. I mean, it, it right smack dab in the middle of the season to take a true breath and be able to regroup, recharge, and reset and be like, all right, it is truly now a six-week season, right? We are three and three. We've started off rocky. We found our stride. Now we get a chance to reset, and now we can really see what is this team about because so much of the first part of the year with the new coach, new staff, is just kind of figuring it all out from how game day management goes to the identity they, that we are, all those things to now you look into the back half of the season and you're going, okay, we know the things we do well, we know the things we have to clean up, and we have an actual plan moving forward because we've actually won some games and we know what it feels like to win. So let's just keep chasing that high, keep chasing that process, and we just want to just keep trying to be the greatest team that we can be. So one of the, the big things that Coach Rule talked about in his press conference is that uh, sounds like Heinrich, Heinrich Harburg is the guy, and, and we've talked a lot about that. Uh, Greg and I have talked a lot about that on the show. I mean, Heinrich just made it really difficult pretty much impossible to take the ball away from him. But when you've had this conversation, and I'm sure it, it is more on the outside than it is on the inside, but when this has been a lingering topic, but to now to know, okay, this is the guy we're moving forward with Heinrich this week, um, you know, what does that do for a football team? Yeah, you know, it it's a, does a couple things. The main thing it does for me is it shows that Coach Rule is not about playing favorites, and he wants to truly put the best player out there to that he thinks gives that team that week the best opportunity to win the football game. You know, so many times you hear about coaches and being in those locker rooms, it's like, oh, that's, that's Coach's guy, right? Like, that's his dude, right? Like, he can do no wrong. He can do no wrong. He's the guy. He's the golden boy, whatever you want to say. You know, and Coach Rule brought Jeff Sims in. That was his guy that he brought in. But I think he is one to go, hey, you know what? Heinrich's winning us football games. I can't take the ball out of that guy's hand. And what I've seen from him do in practice shows us that I think he truly gives us the best chance to win football games right now. And that's a message that gets sent across every position, every age group, from senior down to freshman, that he does not care what the outside world says, what the politics are. He's truly about football. And he's about the players that are going to give him chances to win. And that, that fires me up for the staff and the culture that he's building here at Nebraska. And also fires me up for Harvard because he earned it. You mm -hmm. know, you and I were even ones a couple of weeks ago that were saying, you know, this is still Sims' team. We're not sure. But he went on the road against an Illinois team that has beaten us under Brett Bielma and led this team to a victory when it wasn't pretty, but he found a way to fight. He made plays with his legs. He's gotten better in the passing game as things go. But I wouldn't, I'm excited to see him in back-to-back -back Big Ten opponents. You know, I don't think that anyone's going to stamp this and say it's Harburg's the rest of the way no matter what. But I think he's earned the right to say as of right now, I'm the guy and it's my job to lose. I mean, he's won three of the last four. Huskers are three, three, have won three of the last four games with him starting. So it's, yeah, I mean, I think he's pretty much made the case. And um, unless something happens where, you know, you, you need to go back to Sims, I, I 
think that that's the right call. And you and I started to kind of change our tune last week. It's just um, when you when you do what hadn't been done, which is go win at Illinois, and you know Illinois had Nebraska's number, but you went on the road, Big Ten. It's just, I mean, he he kind of won the job to me. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it's the old adage, if it's not broke, don't fix it, right? Like, it's working, obviously, and everyone will say, well, Michigan, you got to throw Michigan away. That's, that's yeah. not even – you can't even look at that as a game that goes into the equation. You know, you got to look at the two previous games to Michigan and then what he did in Illinois, and that's his resume, in my opinion. And his resume in those three games versus Jeff Sims' first couple of games is better. It's better, and we don't see practice. We don't see behind the scenes, but what we do see is it went over, and he's taking care of the football. You know, he's had some interceptions, but for the most part, he's managing the game well. He's playing within the system. He's taking care of the football. My hope is that with the bye week here, Satterfield, now that he's had two weeks to really kind of dive into him as the true starter, starts to open up the playbook a little bit more for him and start to be a little bit more creative in some of the passing game. Yeah, how much do you see, too, with now no Marcus Washington? And Coach Rule said yesterday that they've got to find ways to get uh, Billy Kemp the football more. Uh, a couple of days ago, Coach Rule said that, and then Satterfield echoed that, that they, they got to get him the ball more. But, you know, with a thin wide receiver room now and some of those young freshman wide receivers and, and that bye week, how much can a can those young guys really come along now that you're halfway through the season and then you did get that bye week to really get some extra work and reps? Yeah, th those young receivers, I would expect to take a big jump. You know, Malachi Coleman and Dawes there that really in the first Illinois was the first time we got to see them in live game reps. And you could tell they were just kind of out there, very simple routes, not a lot of option routes, not a lot of conversion routes, right? If we get this coverage, convert to that or uh, feel his leverage and then option out to whatever way. I think we'll see some more of that from those guys after having two full weeks with the ones, two full weeks with Harburg, right? Understanding where they want to be, the game plan. I think we're going to see a big jump out of those young receivers, but Coach Rule knows it. We all know it. Billy Kemp's got to be the guy in that room now. With Marcus Washington being gone for the year, someone's got to fill those, that role of the on-field leader. Marcus Washington's still going to be a leader on this team. He's going to be there cheering on his teammates, doing everything he can. But you need someone that can be on the field as that field general of that room to calm everyone down or bring everyone up and just know the pace of that room. And I know that's a lot to ask of a guy that just got here a year ago. You know, he hasn't been here for a long time, but those freshmen also just got here. You know, there's no one in that room really that's a clear alpha. And so Billy Kemp's got to step into those roles and make the contested catches and get open and be a friendly receiver for Harburg as he continues to develop as a young quarterback. Valentino's, a slice of home you just can't get anywhere else. What started with a treasured family recipe in Lincoln, Nebraska, has become a classic Italian tradition for 65 years. All right, let's um, talk a little bit about Northwestern. What have you seen on film from them? Uh, we heard that quarterback still could be out, might be seeing a, a backup quarterback on Saturday, but uh, what, what have been your big takeaways on Northwestern, I mean, they, they fought, and at the beginning of the season, we didn't know how many games they'd win, but they, they continue to fight and battle. Yeah, that's one thing in the last few weeks that that team has rallied around themselves with all the craziness that's going on. I mean, you've got Fitzgerald suing the university for $130 million, and the defensive coordinator gets promoted, and you just weren't sure what that team was going to look like from an effort perspective and from just an overall talent perspective. And they have shown that they can be a Jekyll and Hyde team. They've shown that they can come out and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Penn State for two quarters, and they've also shown that they've come out and they can probably lose to Howard. Right, so it's one. It's which Northwestern team are we getting? And they're also coming off the bye week, so they're going to be refreshed. They're going to be ready to go and kind of gotten themselves back together. But this is a team that if you let them hang around, they're going to feel like they still have hope in life. And on paper, Nebraska is the better football team, right? Talent-wise, at just about every position, I think Nebraska is the better football team. But that doesn't always win you games. And Northwestern's a team that is used to not being the best team on paper. They are, but they still have found ways to rally around themselves and win. So I look at this Northwestern team and I think, okay, what have the teams done to have success against them? They've ran the football. They've ran the football. They control the clock. And then what they do on offense is they get after this quarterback. 
And again, if they have a backup quarterback, he came in against that Howard game. Anytime he had pressure in his face, it was pretty much throwing up a 50-50 ball every time it left his hands. Mm. So with what Tony White can do and how he can pressure the quarterback in such unique ways and such exotic looks and create chaos, if that's that young quarterback back there trying to hold on to it, I think this is a game the black shirts can really start picking away at the turnovers, getting us two-plus turnovers, and giving our offense a chance to really get in some rhythm. But if we give them chances and we turn the ball over, they can take advantage of it because they have a couple good offensive linemen in the run game. But overall, this is a team we should go out and handle pretty easily, in my opinion. And I know that we're not the juggernaut that everyone wants us to be or what I hope we can be, but I look at what Northwestern is, and I just think that Nebraska overall is a much better football team. So how much do you think maybe, I mean, with, with the backup quarterback that you, you see Tony White do some things to, to make his day really challenging. Oh, Tony Watts, if, if it's the backup, the, the pressure dial will be maxed out. <laughs> you know, it's going to be dudes coming off the sideline and dropping eight at one point to keep him off his toes. And I think if Tony White's just salivating on please please march that poor kid out there and let me just <laughs> let me just chess match and live rent free inside his head for 60 minutes. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, offensively, what, what kind of steps do you feel like this offense needs to make? And I mean, Coach Rules talked a lot about, hey, it might not always be pretty, but we're going to play complimentary football. And, and um, you know, he, he made his funny joke. We ran the soundbite on Sports Nightly the other day about how, you know, Ed Foley would try to block a punt every game and, and Tony White would send every blitz and you know Satterfield and Garrett McGuire want to throw all these passes but it, it's about managing and being the CEO and making sure that it's complimentary football and I know that was the one thing that you took away from the Illinois game is is they've got to punch it in when, the, when they've got those opportunities but where where can this offense take a step this week against this Northwestern team yeah I think they take a step in the running game you know it was good for a good part of that Illinois game but it kind of fell apart in the back half we still need to put together a complete game on offense, and that starts with taking care of the football and controlling the line of scrimmage. And those are the steps that if we want to give our cha ourselves a chance to go to a bowl game and give ourselves a chance to win some games down the stretch here, those two things have to get much better because we're facing better opponents. We're going into league play. We have to be able to score points without giving the other team a, a, a short field of turnover. So I think with Northwestern, you know, I'd love to see us come out and have a turnover-free game, complete turnover-free game. I don't want any turnovers. That's just Let's just try and have a game with zero turnovers. And then also let these big guys start to really start getting in the groove and Ben Scott, Piper, Nuri, um, and our tackles, Ben Hart and Corcoran, start to get into a groove where they have confidence in what our run scheme is and confidence in what we can do and start really honing in on the identity of what our run game is. You know, Coach Rule and, and the staff have been really diligent about the, it's just about this week, it's 1-0 this week. But when you have a locker room with some guys that have not played in a bowl game and that's what everybody is, is feeding for at this point, how... Does that enter your mind as a player that, hey, and how do you keep it from that? I guess if this is the conversation, this is what you want to do as a football player and, it's, and you haven't been able to do it, and now you kind of maybe think, oh, we might have a chance to do this. How do you balance that as a player? You know, it's, it's good to have that as a goal. You know, every year you walk into a, uh, to the locker room at the beginning of the season with a goal in mind, and for some teams it's the national championship. For some teams, it's a conference championship. For some teams, it's going to a bowl game. And where we're at as a program right now, the first goal and the first step to getting to all those things that we want is a bowl game. And so, yeah, it's 1-0 every week, but that's the, that's the weekly goal. The ultimate team goal is to get back to being national title contenders, but there's baby steps in the process. We have to crawl before we walk, and we have mm -hmm. to walk before we run. And... Right now, getting to a bowl game would be a huge boost for this entire program, you know, as far as recruiting, as far as players understanding what it feels like to earn one of those things and the confidence it can give you going into spring ball. And so it's okay to think about that, and it's okay to go to bed at night going, I'm going to be 1-0 this week so that our ultimate goal can be going to a bowl game. And that's okay. I'm perfectly content with that being the goals that this team has set for for this season, and we'll just continue to grow off of that. So as a player, it's a good thing. All right, let's uh, get to some keys. What are your, your three biggest keys for this one? Yeah, I mean, number one, Tony White. 
murder this kid. I mean, just just mentally, don't let this kid get get a get a bead. You know, if he's going to be the backup in there, just keep him uncomfortable from the word go. Whether it's blitzes on the first play of the game, or just keep him on his toes completely. Offensively, I touch to it. You know, let's make sure that we're turnover free, completely turnover free. I don't want any turnovers. And then the last thing is going to be no pre-snap penalties and no substitution errors. And that goes to both sides of the ball. Watching the football, being in the right formation, being in the right personnel group so that we don't have to burn timeouts early, we don't have to burn a timeout or take a bad delay a game. Those type of things are going to be things that need to get cleaned up that go on the whole team's perspective from communication from the booth to the coaches to the players and then the players from the huddle to the line of scrimmage to the execution of the snap count those things have plagued us in the past we've had the rear its ugly head a few times against illinois i'd like to see zero errors unforced errors for us on saturday players to watch uh shoot players for me you know i think billy kemp he got called out for um wanting to get the ball more so go earn it Right? They're going to scheme you open. They're going to find ways to get you open in the passing game, but go create separation, go burn a guy deep, go be the stud with the yards after catch when you get the ball in your hand. And then offen- uh, defensively, I'm going to say Ty Robinson because he hasn't had the start to the year that I think he would want, that anyone really wanted it from him becoming that dominant player. It looked like he might have been a little dinged up. I know he, he played through it, but he didn't quite have that pop and that power that I'm used to seeing from him the last few games. So I'm hoping with the bye week, he gets really rested up, ready to go, and can finish this year with a really strong performance. How crazy is the West in the Big Ten right I mean, now? It's crazy dumpster fire all over the map. I mean, Iowa might be the worst one-loss football team I've ever seen. <laughs> but I, I'd say that. But I feel like I say that every year. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. I feel like every year I'm like, how is this team winning? And <laughs> um, they find a way with defense and special teams, and it works to an extent. But the West is an absolute crazy fire pit right now. No one wants to just take it and run with it. And it's fun to watch, but, I mean, we all know what happens. You're, you're earning a right to go get smacked down by Michigan and Indianapolis. So, I mean, you're really just earning the right for that. But the Big Ten West is completely up for grabs. I feel like, though, you know, if you're Nebraska, though, and, you know, uh, really a lot of teams, but you're looking at the schedule and then you're seeing what Illinois did in Maryland and Wisconsin, and, and the, they're now banged up. And you, you kind of think, again, and again, you, you focus on this week, but, you know, for us, our purposes here and, and being in the media, and, and Greg and I have talked a lot about this this week, is you're looking ahead like, hey, there's quite a few winnable games at this point. Walk before we run, Jessica. <laughs> Walk before we run. You, you, you're saying you. Didn't... I can't. I can't let myself go there. I can't. <laughs> I can't set myself up for that mental exercise just to be not where we need to be. If we go win the next two games, I will gladly have that conversation. You get on that hype train. And... I will gladly jump <laughs> aboard that train and have that conversation. But let's get two more wins under our belt before we go there. All right, well, we uh, got picks. I had a horrible week, and I actually think you beat me for the first time this year. Woo! And, um, Everyone loves a comeback, Jess. Everyone loves a good comeback still story. You're ways behind. But we'll, uh, we'll see you Got you right where up. I want you. Got you right where I want you. <laughs> we'll see you on Sports Highly coming up on Friday, which is my birthday, by the way. So ah, happy birthday. Enjoying the party for my birthday. So, All right, Friday well, uh, for Jeremiah Searles, I'm Jessica Cootie. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Sideline Slice, presented by Valentino's Pizza, the official pizza of the Huskers. Go Big Red.